Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Primordia. Now, let's see where exactly else we can go here in this town. Let's well, let's talk to Crispin. Do you have any ideas, boss? We need to get into the courthouse and talk to Arbiter. Yeah, I don't know where the courthouse is. The tower's that way. I would assume it's probably over here. I can't safely grab it. Crispin, can you? Crispin, can you fly around the cable and push it off the street? But didn't you just say it's too dangerous to get close to it? I'm giving you a chance to impress her, Crispin. Ah. It's high enough that you don't get close to the sparks. Fine. Be a hero, Crispin. Flex those repulsors. I'm not here to steal parts. A crashed hover bus. So we're gonna fix it up and do something amazing with it, right, boss? No, it's not our property or our problem. I guess the pilot didn't see the stoplight. A floating light pot. It's holding a spool of copper wiring. It's she! And what is she? Are you smitten there, Crispin? It looks like he's trying to fix that crashed hover bus. Oh, it's so cute! I'm waiting for the punchline. What, can't I like a cute little robot once in a while? I doubt it. I was looking at the vacuum cleaner. Well, let's see what else. We got a crashed bus. That's pretty much it. Let's. Excuse me. Can't you see I'm working? I've said it before, but I'll say it again. You do know this ship is never gonna fly again, right? You're right about that. This old airing bus can hardly fly to begin with. Still, there might be some parts here that Metromine can use to get another bus up and running. Anyway, what do you want? Hey, boss, ask him about his helper. Okay, Crispin, I'll humor you. My friend is curious about your helper. No, oh, she's just a sidekick factor build. Thousands of them rolled off the assembly line back in the day, but she's probably the only one left. Really not much more than a floating lantern, and headlamps are a lot cheaper. She says you're not much more than a floating plasma torch. She's right. <laughs> what happened here? What does it look like? The herring bus's motor gave out and it crashed into the only branch leading from Main Street to the rest of the city center. Was anyone on board? Sure, but they've already been salvaged. Salvaged? Not repaired? Can't repair without parts. You can't get parts without salvage. What about building new parts? Yeah, me and what factory? Look, everyone wants to spot bugs, but no one wants to write code. You got a better way to run a city? Go out and build one. Otherwise, get with the program. I like that quote about bugs. You mentioned Metromind. Yeah, sure. She's in charge of this big circuit board we call Metropole. What can you tell me about her? What do I look like? The information kiosk? You want to know what I think? Metromind is the best thing that ever happened in this place. Really? Really. You, me, all these other machines grinding about. We're just tools in the toolbox. But Metromind, she's got the master plan. Progress. Got a nice ring to it, too. So is part of the master plan crashing buses into roads? Look, there's plenty of rust to go around, but Metromine's the only one scrubbing. Not her fault that some of the metal's too far gone. It looks to me like you're the one scrubbing, not Metromine. Like I said, I'm just a tool in the box. Now, I gotta get back to work. Hmm. Can we keep talking to him? You again. What do you want? Since you're so close to her, do you know how I can talk to Metromine? Ha! <laughs> talk to Metromine. Look. Metromind has an entire city to run, but her eyes and ears are everywhere. If she wants to talk to you, she will. So that means she's probably aware of me right now. I'm looking for a big robot. It floats and has big claws and shoots lasers. It scraper. After the last big cave in, the two of us worked together on trying to fix the blue line. He's on the simple side, but a hard worker. What about him? He took something of mine. Yeah, salvaged it probably. That's what most of us do for Metromind these days. Stole it. Hey, you say router, I say router. Anyway, not my problem. You know, we need to actually look up uh, Scraper on the information kiosk. Where can I find Scraper? Do I look like a tour guide? Piece of advice for you. Don't mess with the code if you can't handle the glitches. Very profound. Do you know where I can find a power source? If I did, I'd have salvaged it myself and brought it to the tower. 
Oh, I didn't even notice that. Okay, it crashed through a bridge. I thought it just slammed into a piece of machinery. Okay. When will the bridge be passable? Soon? So I'd say something on the order of a month, give or take. A month? Give or take. And there's no other way off Main Street. Not unless you got a jetpack hiding under that jacket. Well, at least that narrows our options down, boss. Goodbye. Uh -huh. She's holding a spool of copper wiring. Okay, Crispin. You're on. Hey, Crispin, why don't you go talk to her? What? No way, boss. She's way out of my league. She's a floating lamp, Crispin. You've never had any trouble with lamps before. Well, I've never had to talk to one before, boss. Just knock them off ledges. I've got no practice. Hmm. He's a little bit shy. All storage bladders empty. We can't afford to waste time on every random robot we meet in Metropole. You know, boss, I really wish you applied that principle more consistently. Alright. So there's a bladder that's empty? We have nothing to fill said bladder with. What about you? You look like a minion. Send robots away. We can't afford them. Alright. Well, let's head this way. Ah! This must be the courthouse. It's a carving of a gynoid holding crude scales in one hand. It's a carving... I'm pretty sure that wiring isn't up to code. So there's the tower on the other side. It looks like... Oh, look at that stovetop hat. That's awesome. And we're in a new area. We got a battle bot, floating robot, small robot, tall robot, fat robot, and an exit. Let's look at the small little guy. Aww. A tall robot wearing a top hat. A rotund robot wearing a monocle. Oh, these are some uh, high living robots here. A tall robot. A small, simple robot. A complicated floating robot with a spinning antenna on its head. A tough looking war machine. Well, let's talk to the war machine first. Excuse me. Sir, my apologies, sir. 187th Legion Belt, Surly Company, reporting. Uh, Horatio Nobel, version 5. A pleasure. Horatio Nobel, sir? Never heard of any service bot with that designation. Still, it's good to see another Urbanian, sir. After things got fubar back home, I figured Surly Company was all that was left. Urbanian? What are you talking about? Massad! Finally made a friendly and he's as crying as primer. What? No offense, sir. Just hoped. Well, never mind that. How can I assist you, sir? Surly Company, Urbanian. What are you talking about? Um, well, sir, I'm not sure quite where to start. I had you figured for one of us, seeing as how you came up as a friendly on my IFF. I could see you as a member of Surly Company, boss, but as friendly? Nah. Zumi's got some mouth on him, huh, sir? Always do those flyboys. Look, why don't you just give me a quick rundown? Well, sir, can't see the harm, even if you are a decoy. War's over, after all. It was over before Surly Company even deployed. See, we're Urbanian robots. Long time back, Urbani and Metropole got to fighting over something. Who knows what? The Metropolitans fried our civilians, and Legion told us to strike back. Word was, some big airship of ours was supposed to knock out Metropole's defenses, and we just come in for Mappa. But the Metros took our ship down with their own heavy hitter, some giant named Goliath. I see. Anyway, Surly Company was all that was left, so we deployed 200 strong. What happened then? Well, it's a long march from Urbani, sir, and most of us... Well... Most of us broke down on the way. All said and done, the only ones who made it were me, 113th, and a signal bot we call Primer. The rest are all out there in the dunes somewhere. I'm sorry. War's war, sir. If it didn't crash hard, they wouldn't have built us in the first place. If it makes you feel any better, Horatio cut a finger off a giant robot that I'm pretty sure was Goliath. Well, sir, someone ought to stick a medal on your chest. So I have a theory. What if the airship was the unique? That's interesting. Why are you in line? Seeing as how I'm on the outside now, sir, I figured I had to go pay restitution for shooting up the enemy HQ. Enemy HQ? Yes, sir. That big tower in the center of the city. Okay, so why haven't you paid? It sounds like all of this happened a long time ago. 
Years ago, sir. But the courthouse has been locked down the whole time. I figured they'll open it up eventually, and then I can clear my name. What if it doesn't open? Well, sir, I know all about hurry up and wait. Can I try opening that door? Lay that, sir. The authorities told me that no one goes in till the door opens on its own. But aren't we on the same side? Affirmative, sir. But since I'm on CivDiv now, my programming requires me to submit to the local authorities. Ah. So we know about Primer. Who's 113th? What happened to 113th and Primer? After we got to Metropole, we tried to put up a fight, but couldn't do much. They fried 113th, and my rifles jammed. Primer surrendered on our behalf. After dressing us down, they took all my big guns and sold the 113th shell to some scrap dealer. Primer never was the same. He encrypted part of his own logic so he wouldn't have to think about losing the war any longer. Then, he disappeared beneath the city. And me, I came here. How did the war end? For Surly Company, it ended when we staggered in here and surrendered. Beyond that, sir, it's all above my pay grade. Through this, sir, we never even knew what we were fighting for, let alone what the Metropolitans wanted. So I can't say for certain that Metropole won, but I'm pretty sure Urbani lost, what with all the civilians being dead and the army being beaten. Yeah, that's pretty much losing. How do you know you even have to pay something? This seems logical, sir. What if I could pay your fine for you, or get it cancelled? Well, sir, then I'd be much obliged, and I'd probably just leave town. Can't say that I'd much like being in enemy territory. And how are we gonna do that, boss? I'll figure something out. Okay. That's interesting. I met Primer. You still crazy? Yep. Well, so it goes. Goodbye. Over and out, sir. So, we gotta try and let him 187th. We gotta let no we got to let 187th know that he is pretty much free and clear of his loan. Or his debt. Hello? Hello? I don't think I can hear you, boss. Looks like a steampunk version of the probe droid from Empire Strikes Back. Let's try the signal transmitter on it. I'm going to try sending messages to him in binary. On an analog transmitter? That sounds like fun. For once, I'm glad you're the one with hands. May Mandelbrot's bulbs unfurl their spirals for you, son. What's he saying? You do not show an army. I sing alone. I am one poor great friend. To your kind, I will be known as Gimbal, filled by life of Sovitos. Gimbal? Uh, by the way, she has an amazing voice. Civitus? I am sad. Burning ship has been extinguished. Strange tractors track no more. I alone sing the function. Why are you in line? When I came to this silent city, I looked for others to join the harmony. Leopold, built by steeple, told me that he had had a device that would sing with me. In exchange, I traded my secondary motor. But what he sold me does not sing. Can I see it? Oh. What do I what do I have? Oh. But that still doesn't explain why you're here. You have lawsuits in the Great Fractal? So why don't you speak? It's like a Sesame Street song. Now, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to go ahead and ask anyway. Can I go ahead of you? No. I must recover my monitor so that I can dance with the harmony. Looks like we're going to need to go talk to Leopold about a motor. Yeah. Now, what's your deal there, you dapper fellow? Ahoy, my dear friend. Oswald Factorville at your service. It's no more your dear friend than Rex is your creation, you besotted gear oiler. Oh, don't mind Cornelius. He's been bitter since the first great rolling brownout. Better? Better? I'll show you bitter, you backbiting butt snatcher. 
I think I like these guys, boss. I do too. They're kind of like a clockwork version of C3PO and R2D2. What's in that building? Why, just course, of course. Why else would we be here? I need to see Arbiter. We all do, my dear friend. But the courthouse is locked. And first come, first serve. Why are you waiting in line? Justice. I'm here for justice. To prove that I, Cornelius Factorbilt, created this marvelous machine, Rex. Rex Cornelius built. Ignore him, my dear friend. Candidly, he is 10, 23 flops short of a kilo if you catch my drift. The machine's name is Oswald Built. Rex Oswald Built. This is over a name? Why not just let Rex decide? Ridiculous. This is about principle. This is about pride. So, uh, boss? Would you fight over me like this? You could call yourself Crispin Crispian for all I care. As long as you still pull things off legends for me, that is. Uh, Glad to know I'm loved. So loved. So, this is a custody battle. Actually, I take that back. It's not C-3PO and R2-D2. This is uh, Thomas Edison and Nikolai Tesla. How are you going to decide who gets Rex? For the law, for the law. Please excuse my brother. He can barely remember Pi to the 23rd digit, let alone his manners. For? I arrest my case. Suffice it to say, old chap, we await the reopening of the courthouse. Or more precisely, we await a summons from Arbiter who will decide our case. Who will say whose contribution was more important? Who will say, in fact, that my contribution was more important? He sounds exactly like the voice actor who did the Riddler in the Batman Arkham games. I'm looking for a big robot. It floats and has lots of claws and shoots lasers. It stole something of mine. Have you seen it? Indeed. The robot you describe sounds like Scraper, Metro Mind's enforcer. Whatever he took is gone forever. I refuse to accept that. Oh, he refuses. How delightful. Do you know where I can find a power source? Alas, my friend, the power is not so abundant in Metropole as it once was. That lag and Metro Mind seized it all. Seized it and doles it out. And there's hardly enough to go around now. Metromine keeps all power sources in the Great Tower where the Council used to meet. If you want to share it, you will need to pay her in megacycles. Megacycles? Yes, megacycles, Nini. CPU cycles, brain power. The kind of power she really wants. Ah, okay. No rate processor was made for running trains, not a city. So maybe she uses the CPU to keep her mind augmented? Since she wasn't really programmed for city for running a city. Could someone else judge your case? Of whom were you thinking? Metro Mind, perhaps? Authoritative to be sure, but I fear she would claim Rex for the good of all. And since the subway schemer He means Metro Mind. Shut down our builder factor, he cannot help either. What about Horatio? Who? Me. And why should we listen to you? I built a robot before, and I have no stake in this. Yes, yes, well and good, but this is a matter of law and logic. A bit harder than banging together a tin can like your companion. Whoa! We know your reasoning is sound. Don't you dare call Crispin a piece of scrap. That's mine. That's my tin can. Test me? What if I found someone else? Okay, test me. Test me. An interesting proposition. What do you say, Cornelius? What do I say? I say... That you are a liar and a thief, Oswald. But as to this Horatio, well, as to him, so be it. Boss, if they make us find seven lost crystals, I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, <laughs> at the binomial by any robots uh. in the probability circle are gathered for the party. The what circle is gathered at the what what? Is this some kind of vocab test? I said quiet. Each robot is either a factor built or a stone wireless built. Blasted Sternweilers. And moreover, each robot is designed with either a quad core, a linear type, or a multiplex processor architecture. This is ridiculous! Pay attention. Fractor or Sternweiler. Quad core, linear type, or multiplex. Indeed. Now I will tell you three things about these probabilities. First, there are more factor built robots than Sternweiler built. Second, every linear type robot was built by Fractor. Finally, Sternweiler never built a robot. Now listen, which of the following statements about the probability circle cannot possibly be true? Um, 
Okay. Uh, that sound you may hear in the background is actually my ears bleeding. I hate stuff like this. I am very mathlexic. Could you... Here, hold on, let me get my pen and paper here. Okay. Hopefully they can repeat the question. Could you repeat the question? Huh. Indeed. At the binomial biennial, seven robots in the probability circle are gathered. Seven robots. Each robot is either a factor built or a stern wire. Factor or stern. Before, each robot is designed with either a quad core, a linear type, quad linear multi. More factors. Every linear type robot was built by factor. Linear so built or er, built a robot with a quad core. Now listen, which of the following statements about the probability circle cannot possibly be true? Okay, Factor built the linear processors and Stern doesn't build the quad. And there's more factors than Stern. Which of these would not be true? Uh five robots have linear Four robots have multiplex. Four robots were built by Stern. Well, wait, if there's seven robots, four robots is the majority. Those were built by Stern. Factor has more, so that would be that would be false. Four robots were built by Sternweiler. Good show. The preceding facts are unchanged. Who? Oh. Now, answer this. If exactly two factor-built robots have the same type of processor architecture, then which of the following must be true? Oh, does this keep on going? Okay, um, two, two of the factors have the same architecture. One of the seven robots has a quad-core processor. Okay, hold on a second. No, Stern doesn't have a, qu a quad. All right. One of the seven robots has a quad-core processor. If and there's more factors, that doesn't necessarily. One of the seven robots having a quad-core processor, the processor. There's nothing that guarantees that linear has that. Two of the seven robots have a linear-type processor. Uh, that doesn't really say anything. Four of the seven robots have multiplex. Five of the seven robots were built by Factor. Hmm. All right, give me one second, guys. I'm going to listen to the problem again, and we're going to see where we go. Okay, thinking about this problem, if two of the if two of them had the same architecture, and this was made by Factor, who are in the majority. I'm just going to say three of the seven robots were built by Stern. Three of the seven robots were built by Sternweiler. Correct. Here Holy crap. The third uh, there's a third? Are still unchanged. Which of the following types of processor architecture might you find in a probabilitist built by Sternweiler? Oh, lord. Okay, Stern, they have no quad processors. They have no processors, or they have no quad processors, only linear. Okay, Factor only makes the linears, Fa uh, Stern doesn't use quad, so only multiplex. Only multiplex. Hmm. Well, it seems we underestimated you, my friend. I'm uploading the facts of our dispute to your data. Nice. Please, take some time to consider, and let us know when you are ready to hear our arguments. Oh, man. Lawyer Robot Hero. That that sucked. Um That's said it was in the data pouch. Rex lawsuit. The legal dispute between Oswald and Cornelius factor built. Designed by Cornelius, assembly by Oswald, concept to completion 4 years, design time 1 year. Okay. Cornelius invented new pneumatic drive chain assembly. Assembly includes many servos, waldos, and crankshafts. Cost of parts borne equally by both. Basic frame incorporates features, a public domain model. 
Cornelius has several other well-known bot designs. Oswald has not built any other bots but serviced Factor for years. That's... That's an actually pretty even case. All over this little guy. Can we see what he's saying too? Where? There you go. There's no reason to torment that robot. I beg to differ. To use the signal transmitter? There's no reason to torment that robot. Oh. Okay. Um. Crispin, can you? I'm not doing that until you build me some arms. Oh. Alrighty. I guess we cannot talk to him. A pretty basic radio transmitter. By playing with the settings, I can send up to a four-digit signal. Alright, that's unfortunate. Let's see what's over here. I am waiting. Aww, that is a sad robot. What are you doing here? Waiting. For what? My bus. Uh, I'm pretty sure the bus isn't coming. It will come. Your bus is a burning wreck about two blocks from here. It will come. I must go home. Metromind will take me home. A rather simple looking model. He's like a robot version of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. I am waiting. Bus stop. Buses run every 10 minutes. 10 is crossed out and 30 is written below it. 30 is crossed out and 60 is written below it. 60 is crossed out and daily is written below it. Daily minutes? That doesn't make sense. If it makes you feel better, daily is crossed out and surface suspended is written below it. Hmm. Is there anything else here? That was just depressing. And these guys are still needing their case. And we also have to talk to Leopold, I think, about that part that he's that he stole from this robot right here. So I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. I guess it's got a lot of stuff to go over. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, go ahead and click like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Wow, so majestic. Hush, Crispin. <laughs> um, leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.